Muchas gracias. Uh, honourable members of Parliament, um, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a very great pleasure to be here in the European Parliament for the opening of COS's exhibition on networks and science. Networking is a marvellous way, as we all know, to improve Europe's scientific excellence. In the first place, this means bringing teams of researchers and scientists together to collaborate, but it also means creating opportunities to bring researchers, business, parliamentarians and governments together to work together to improve our science systems and policy. COST was a major improvement when it was launched in 1971 to promote cooperation among researchers across Europe. This was long before the European Research Area and Innovation Union acted as the reference frameworks for research and innovation policy in Europe as they do today. Within the COST framework, more than 200 networks are active, involving some 20 to 30,000 researchers. I would like to thank COST's staff and its president, uh, Dr. Rodriguez Peña, as well as her predecessors, Professor Fady and Mr. Deal, for their work to modernize this framework, which now meets their customers' needs even more efficiently and effectively. The benefits of these reforms were identified in the recent FP7 midterm evaluation of COST um, and in line with the recommendation of that particular review, COST now enjoys an additional 30 million euro of funding from FP7 to support the COST researcher community via the European Science Foundation. This brings the total EU financial support to 240 million euro. I would like to highlight two areas in which the flexible bottom-up nature that Pilar talked about of cost has proven to add real value. First, cost identifies, supports and gives visibility to pockets of excellence throughout Europe. Cost can be instrumental in helping research communities in less advanced regions to develop their capacities, strengthen excellence and thus boost their participation in FP7 and indeed in the future Research and Innovation Programme Horizon 2020. This is an important contribution. It was a crucial consideration for us when we allocated additional funds to cost under FP7. Second, COST reaches out effectively to young researchers. I hope COST will continue to build on this, giving many more young researchers a taste of the benefits of collaborating at the European level. Because now more than ever, many of you who have heard me speaking before have heard me saying that we need the best brains working together in Europe on the breakthroughs that are needed to tackle major societal challenges such as climate change, food and energy security and public health. A well-functioning European research area, the ERA, will allow us to avoid fragmentation of efforts and achieve the critical mass that's necessary to tackle our biggest research challenges. And ERA will give us better value for money by reducing unnecessary duplication in the research and infrastructure financed under national systems. That's not to say that national research or research systems aren't also terribly important. Of course not. A diversity of systems and approaches is very healthy and produces creative synergies. But through ERA, we need to connect up national research systems more effectively to create the right balance between cooperation and competition so that we get the most out of them. EU added value comes from cross-border cooperation, from EU-wide competition to promote excellence, the mobility of researchers and of course leveraging public and private finance into EU projects. Our ambitions for the European Research Area and for Innovation Union will be supported by Horizon 2020, the new programme for European Research and Innovation to be launched in 2014. Horizon 2020 will be more than a funding programme. With the Parliament's support, Horizon 2020 will underpin the European Union's goal to become a truly innovative knowledge society, boosting growth and jobs. 
the European Commission is working intensively to finalise its proposals on Horizon 2020, which will be presented at the end of this year. With Parliament's support, we will ensure that an efficient, effective and user-friendly Horizon 2020 starts on time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that the exhibition that we can see here this evening will give us an innovative picture of what COST stands for and will inform us about all of the elements of research that they've been involved in, both within the Union and, as uh, Pilar said, outside of the European Union membership. I'm dedicated to improving how we communicate more widely the vital work achieved by investing in research and innovation at a European level. So I warmly welcome initiatives like this that illustrate the results and indeed the impact of research cooperation across European borders and in this case the benefits achieved through cost networking. I'm eager to see how these cost activities address the key societal challenges, the issues that are of greatest concern to people and how they enhance innovation and competitiveness throughout Europe. This cost exhibition will, I hope, show again that European society is much better off with European research and innovation. So thank you for your attention.